everyone. Welcome to Faircode On Air. I'm Lauren Jankowski, the Marketing Manager here at Faircode, and I'll be moderating today's webinar, IT Solutions for Public Disaster Relief, How the State of Tennessee Innovated Citizen Services. Before we begin, I'd like to give you some background information on Faircode. Faircode is an elite ServiceNow partner that provides cutting edge technology services, managed services, and staff augmentation to federal, state, and local government organizations. We're proud to have over 270 certifications, nearly 70,000 hours of services performed, and partnerships with Microsoft, ServiceNow, Google, and many more as you can see here. As a perk of attending today's webinar, we're gonna be giving away a $50 Visa gift card. We'll announce the winner at the very end of today's session, so make sure you stay on for the entire webinar. Today's presenters are Lisa Ward, our Director of Customer Success, and Jason Sweat, a Senior Account Executive. I'll be moderating, monitoring the Q&A throughout today's session, so I, just please send in any questions as they arise and we'll do our best to answer them. Now, I'd like to hand things over to Lisa Ward. Hi everyone, I'm so glad that you could join us today. Uh, first, we're gonna take you through the problem that the State of Tennessee Department of Human Services was trying to solve. Uh, then we'll get to the emergency situations that made solving them even more important than ever. Uh, we'll talk about the agility of the ServiceNow platform and how it enabled us to deliver a quick and timely response. We'll tell you about the guiding metaphors of this project, give you some details about the data model and the Paris release, and finally we'll sum up by telling you how this all came together to produce a, a successful outcome for the Tennessee Department of Human Services. So it all began last February. Um, we won TDHS's bid for IT modernization. Um, so they particularly needed some assistance in two places, uh, SNAP and TANF. So uh, if you guys are familiar with those, it's temporary assistance for needy families and supplemental nutrition assistance, basically financial aid. Um, so their current state was pretty time intensive. It was manual. Um, and, and I think that they, they had a, a great, you know, uh, view into the idea of, of needing to make this better, uh, make it more efficient. And the state as a whole is just leaning into modernization, modernization. So they're trying to bring the convenience of experiences into government that I think we're all used to. Um, you know, think about shopping on Amazon and how easy that is. I mean, uh, you know, this is day two of Prime Day. This is this is what we we've, we've come to expect. It's a really good thing that the state of Tennessee was leaning into that convenience and modernization mindset then, because it came in handy when tragedy struck. And it's a tragedy that literally hit home for Jason as a Nashville resident. Yeah, uh, so I, I actually lived about three blocks away from where the tornado passed through downtown Nashville. Um, so back on March 3rd, uh, the tornado cut itself across the state, west to east, uh, killed 25 people, injured hundreds. Um, there were 70,000 people without power. Uh, I didn't have power for five days. So my, my new home office became a Holiday Inn in Brentwood. Um, so, you know, it, it's an experience I'll never forget, but, but I'm one of the lucky people, right? Uh, I, I don't have to, to worry about, uh, things like where, uh, where I'm going to get my, my food stamps or, or anything like that, or I don't need financial assistance from the state. So, uh, we were very fortuitous though, because the state was already modernizing, uh, via CSM. So, you know, situations like this, um, an office was completely flattened. So what had happened in the past is people would go to this office and they would stand in line and they would apply for benefits. They would meet with their caseworkers and that wasn't even there. Um, so these poor folks had to deal with things like no power, um, their food in their fridge going bad. Uh, they, may not, they may not even have a roof over their head anymore. Uh, so, and then there's this other disaster that hit that you guys may have heard of. Right, as if the tornado weren't enough, um, you know, we then had COVID come on the scene. You know, as an Alabama native, I know all about tornadoes, especially, you know, the part where after it's over, you just, you hug your family tight and you get together with your neighbors and you all get to work cleaning things up. But with COVID, we had to figure out how to come together in the exact opposite way by keeping our distance as much as we could. Even though we stayed apart though, we still had to figure out how to meet our basic needs and keep things running. So it's so fortunate that the state of Tennessee had already been planning to modernize their processes when these two major disasters came along and radically altered the way they do business. So enter in ServiceNow Agility. Um, you know, there are clearly a lot of challenges to this situation, but the agility of the ServiceNow platform is really built to respond to them. 
So, um, you know, one of the, the big key components here is you can collapse the implementation cycles from months to weeks. Uh, that's, that's huge, right? Um, you can plan for, for things, um, but, but in this case, you can't really plan for the tornado and you certainly can't plan for COVID and, you know, it was capable to respond to that. Um, once deployed, um, features changes can be added quickly. So again, going back to that agility, being able to, to quickly adapt to the situation in front of you. Uh, and the data models, entities, and personas, they, they maximize how the agency would interact with people. And I think that that's really uh, one, of, one of the big keys here is, you know, being able to find that, that Amazon-like, that uh, immediate single service uh, expectation that we all have. So Ferricode was able to use the platform's agility to produce some truly astounding results for the state of Tennessee. Um, whereas before their manual processes meant that they could process about five applications for benefits a day, they got that down to five an hour. That's about a 700% increase in productivity. Uh, inquiry resolution times dropped by about 70% in total, total response times. And what's even more astounding is that we were able to get this initial CSM capability deployed in about six weeks. Yeah, I think those are some pretty great results. Um, you know, one of the ways we were able to achieve them was uh, to keep these two main metaphors in mind uh, that were important to TDHS. So the first is no wrong door. Um, so the idea with this is when you enter in the system, uh, the customer facing motto is essentially that they wanted to make sure that citizens could always get to the right place for benefits, no matter where they began. Uh, second metaphor is a single pane of glass. So single view into the entire portfolio of services um, you know, and, and really the, that's the performance they wanted for their agency. And, and I think that, uh, being able to, you know, really attack both sides of this in a way where, uh, the data makes sense and it's prevented or presented in an efficient manner makes a big difference. And I think that that's directly correlated to, uh, the increases in productivity and, and the ability, uh, for TDHS to, to work with their, uh, with their citizens. So. We have a special guest with us today, uh, Justin Roberts, who is our uh, architect at the State of Tennessee deployment. So uh, I'll go ahead and hand it over to him. Hey everyone, how y'all doing? Um, this is mainly around how the ServiceNow data model enables us to better enhance not only the user experience, but the caseworker experience or the employee experience at DHS. Um, initially, we were leveraging CSM capabilities from New York and Orlando and recently moved to Paris. So we can now leverage these specific things in Paris uh, that they've come out with to really enhance the experiences across the board, um, specifically in the, in the new data model that they've produced. And this allows things like relationship building, um, case types, the ability to determine automatic case routing, and a bunch of things that tie into how the employees do their jobs. Now, not only does it allow the employees to do their jobs, but this also gives the individual user the ability to do something that previously unheard of, which is define a household model. And a household model is defining the individuals that are in a household with things like the relationship types, who are they to you? Um, what sort of incomes they have, what other benefits are they already receiving, those types of things allow you to build a model of an entire household from a single individual. Now, DHS is, you know, exactly like a lot of the other organizations whenever it comes down to interacting with consumers and interacting with business. So, Right now, what we're leveraging is the customer service portal and the customer service management interfaces to both enable DHS to do business to business and business to consumer models in the same space, which gives them the ability to do things such as um, have field workers go out to uh, look at a specific uh, building for, say, child care, make sure it's up to code, make sure it's up to spec, as well as get them certified to be able to uh, get money from the state to be able to build on those relationships. So a little bit more about the data model in Paris. The extensibility is one of the main things that 
it allows us to do. Utilizing case type uh, plugins is another one and relationships is another big one. So getting into these a little bit more, CSM has always been about reaching out to a customer base. Now we can do a lot more with reaching out to customer bases whenever we have um, these data-driven entities. So if a user comes into the system and they're trying to do this specific thing, we can now enable them to um, get to where they need to be and have all of the data in the back end tied together to give the case workers a more seamless experience to be able to process those applications quicker. Um, essentially the same thing with the case types. Whenever we identify case types, it's usually on say like a per application basis or a per need basis. This gives us the ability to assign workflows and different processes to different cases, separating them out enough so that we can tell differences between each different um, types of cases uh, each different use case for um, the users that are coming into the system, as well as a lot of analytics and data behind that. Um, and the relationship model is one of the real big ones that CSM has brought to the table in Paris, which is we now have the ability to do something that we haven't been able to do previously, which is give, um, say, a nurse in uh, an old age facility the ability to monitor and manage benefits for multiple different households or individuals that would have to go into an office or would have to have some sort of uh, disability assistance to be able to process, sorry, to be able to get through these applications to get whatever they needed from this. Hey, thanks, Justin. Uh, that's a great overview of CSM, the new Paris release. Um, you know, at the end of this webinar, there'll absolutely be a question and answer period. Feel free to ask questions. Uh, if they're more in depth, we'll be happy to answer them. Just send us a note. We'll, we'll send out an email to you guys. So before we get there, we want to wrap up by taking you through the successes we've had on both the business side and the citizen side of the project. So even in normal times, the Department of uh, Human Services just they have their hands full. They've got 133 field offices in 95 counties. They oversee 18 programs and services. Um, they have 4,400 employees and a customer base of more than 2 million Tennessee citizens. When you consider that before this implementation, some citizens had to physically come into an office, fill out these forms by hand, employees had to manually process them, uh, you know, the business benefits are clear. Automating these processes and setting up efficient workflows would have been an amazing thing before these disasters happened. But when we throw in a tornado and a pandemic, they become an outright miracle. And these processes weren't just more efficient. They also saved the state money. Moving to paperless notifications has saved Tennessee about $500,000 a month in paper and postage alone. This implementation also meant that state employees could quickly adjust to a changing work environment without disrupting their workflow. They just, they didn't miss a beat. They started working from home to serve citizens, which would have been impossible without ServiceNow. And finally, this, uh, this modernization radically improved their audit processes. Their previous processes were slow and of course manual, and the checks and balances in place around them weren't especially robust. It could take a week or more just to do a single fraud check. Now the reports can be pulled easily so that audits can happen at the speed of business and their data, the, their data is much, much safer. So of course these business uh, successes are really exciting, but I think where Jason and I both really connect to this story is on the citizen side of things, which he's gonna take you through. We've both worked the kind of jobs when we were younger where missing work could mean going without something that we needed or even getting fired. Yeah, and you know, I think that that's uh, something that that really matters here. Um, you know, when something as simple as not having to stand in line can be life changing, because you know, imagine you're an essential worker. So um, let's say you got co you got COVID, or you had to rebuild your home after the tornado, uh, or, or both. Um, you know, you could concentrate on healing your body, rebuilding your life in the safest possible way. Uh, and, and these days, lines are a safety risk, um, and because of the work you know, that we've done, it's completely avoidable. Uh, and, and let's not forget that state of Tennessee, DHS employees, these are, these are citizens, right? They're, they're us, they're my neighbors, they're people that, that work around us, they're people we work with every day. Uh, and their safety matters just as much. So 
Uh, I don't think any of us thought back in March that we'd still be working around COVID in October, uh, but our work meant that the state didn't have to sacrifice the health of its employees to serve the rest of the state citizens. Uh, they can reopen in ways that make sense to them. So that 70% reduction in casework, it had a real effect on people. Um, you know, how many people has it helped more than it would have regularly? Uh, how many more cases have come up? Um, you know, think about the place that we're in today and, and how valuable this has been. And this was because the state decided it wanted to modernize and, and then, you know, other things got in the way. Thanks everyone. We, we appreciate your time here. Uh, I know that there's gonna be an opportunity for questions and answers to be asked. I think I see something in the chat already. Um, Lauren, I'll let you go ahead and take over moderation here. Perfect. Yeah, it looks like there are some questions coming in. Um, so here's the first one. What about the CSM data model made this approach so effective? So pre-Paris, uh, the data model was mainly geared towards um, the individual user and not necessarily a household model. Uh, that was in New York, Orlando, and what was before. Now, moving to the new Paris data model, it allows us to more fluently involve other household members within the kind of the day-to-day -day activity. So whenever we're defining something like a, whenever we're defining something like a household, an application could need um, how many people are in the household, what ages they are, what their income levels are, how much money you have uh, in liquid funds versus savings versus 401k versus IR, all of those different types of things. And with the household data model, and the reason why it's so beneficial to us is we can capture all of that essentially on profile creation and then use that information to automate the process of filling out an application, have it auto-populate the fields, have it auto-populate household members, do the calculations ahead of time to make sure that things work appropriately for the application. Um, and as well as doing some pre-eligibility checks. If Say if you are looking specifically for SNAP and TANF benefits, um, but you have a child that's under the age of three and you actually qualify for some childcare benefit. We can tell a lot of that just by looking at the household data that enables us to get to those conclusions. Awesome. Um, here's another question for you guys. How has this affected the day-to-day -day of the folks at DHS? So the day-to-day -day work at DHS, it changed. Um, whenever COVID hit and really whenever the tornadoes hit, basically the same time, sadly, mm -hmm. but everyone had to go from a let's all go to the office and work to let's work from home. And we've seen this become kind of a trend across the board with a lot of the states and how they're handling it is, it's different in many ways. It varies quite significantly. But using ServiceNow to be able to get benefits out to these individuals, it made the process a lot more fluid. It was easier to understand. It was easier to manage the different cases that were in the system, it was easier to get citizens benefits and it was a lot quicker across the board. Um, uh, you know, one of the figures that they threw out was a 70% reduction in time, which that's insanely huge whenever it comes to trying to get mass benefits out to citizens that are affected by these either natural disasters or pandemic related incidents. Um, this is also transitioning into how do we serve um, how do we serve SNAP and TANF members more effectively and how will that impact their day-to-day? -day? So if you look at say the state of Tennessee, which we're doing now, um, we usually see anywhere from about 5,000 to 20,000 applications per application type in a month. So having that 70% reduction will allow them to work a lot quicker, get that benefit out to the citizen and increase their day-to-day -day productivity to be able to give them the ability to um, either tackle other casework or assist customers in another need, which is really the benefit of having this approach. Awesome. Um, and here's one last question that we just got. Um, how quickly can something like this be stood up? So we stood up the initial what we call the relief portal for state of Tennessee, which is based on the CSM uh, data model. And 
that was stood up very quickly because we needed an answer to a question of I can't go and stand in line or my building was destroyed that I usually go to because of a tornado. We had to stand something up very quickly. Um, in actuality, day-to-day uh, -day work, would, it would depend on what you need, what you're looking for, but the base application could be stood up in six to eight weeks. Um, we were on a time crunch and what we needed was very crucial to the citizens at that point. So we worked basically night and day to stand this up in about a two week time frame. So it can be done, but there's a lot more legwork in it than you would first expect to get something um, kind of production ready. Awesome. Well, that looks like all the questions and answers that um, we had. So now I'd like to announce the winner of our $50 Visa gift card. And it looks like it is Philip Earl. Congratulations, Philip. Um, we will email your gift card to you directly. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for joining um, today's webinar and learning about the success that we had at the State of Tennessee. And if you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to us at info at ferrocode.com. And to see more sessions just like this one, visit our website at ferrocode.com. Thanks and enjoy the rest of your day.